Thanks for joining us. My name is Brandon Rigaud, and I'm the Senior Project Manager for Vector Scheduling. Uh, today we're going to be going over, in just a second here, once I show my screen, we're going to be going over the ve Convergence Red Vector Scheduling solution called Vector Scheduling. We're going to cover several of the main pain points that we understand exist in uh, the commercial air arena. Uh, that would be scheduling employees, sharing schedules, uh, recall or, or calling in for employees to fill open shifts, uh, and a couple other items. Now this is a completely open form, so I want to invite everybody as you have questions. Uh, I also have Jen on the line with us from our office, uh, who's one of our support folks, and they'll be able to answer questions. So I do want to encourage everybody to answer questions using the question and answers on the side. And at the end, I'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Uh, if you raise your hand, I can unmute you and we can kind of do a one-on-one -on -one question. Now I'll give a little background behind the, the solution here. Uh, so Vector Scheduling started as CrewSense back in 2012, uh, and it was really established to be a scheduling solution for all mission critical industries. Uh, so that'd be you know 24 seven manufacturing, commercial applications, uh, emergency services, and other uh, areas where employees were needed. Uh, and so since then, the program has grown uh, up to uh, about 900 agencies and, and businesses in the United States and Canada. And that's about 90, 90,000, 91,000 daily users in our platform. The platform is completely web hosted. It is a cloud solution, meaning you can access it from any modern browser. Um, Chrome, Safari, Internet Explorer. You can also access it from our, one of our mobile apps, both for uh, iOS and Android. Uh, to log in, you'll simply go to the uh, Convergence login or into uh, uh, CrewSense directly and log into the site. And we'll go ahead and do that. Once you log in, you'll be directed to our home screen and our control panel. And it'll be just a sec here to catch up. Now, a couple things about the platform. It being web hosted means that your employees will be able to access the schedule from anywhere that they uh, happen to be. And everything is tracked within here. Now, the program is completely uh, customizable uh, or configurable to your needs. Uh, what this allows you to do is to toggle on areas of the system that you don't need or areas that you do need uh, to really focus the, the solution on your pain points that you have as a business. Now we'll start with a little bit of orientation. We're not gonna go through each one of these today. We're gonna to do a high level overview of several of the key features uh, and solutions that we offer within the platform. On the left side of the screen, you'll notice that we have uh, different tabs here. These are all what we call our modules. Just like I mentioned before, these are uh, configurable uh, and we're gonna go through several of these. On the top here where you see your name, that's where anything that's uh, applicable to you will be managed. So where your rankings are, when the last time you had time off was, if you manage your accruals, your employees' accruals, you'll be able to manage those in there. Uh, also where you edit your profile, which we'll talk about in a moment. And then the center of the screen is where the crew scheduler uh, d data will display, which we'll go over in just a moment. Now, before we get too far, I do wanna share the communications, uh, the telecommunications piece of the platform with you. Um, and, and so in order to do that, we're gonna put your phone number in here. I won't call you on it later or anything. Uh, we'll simply use it for today's demonstration and then I'll go ahead and remove it later. Um, if you can send it over as a question in the question and answer area, uh, I'll have Jen kind of plug those in and I'll be able to demonstrate the callback feature for you. Now, as those uh, come in, I'll go ahead and start uh, by demonstrating the center of the screen here is what we call our dashboard. So for the first time you log into the platform, the first thing you'll see uh, are any company announcements. Those are things you want everybody to be able to see. You can also require those to be read. Uh, and then also uh, the, today's roster. Today's roster will show you notes and activities for things that are going on around your, uh, your business and also show you how many employees you have scheduled that day. Uh, in our manufacturing space and commercial space, we find this is a really important piece to show you how many of each position you have scheduled. So here you can see that we have uh, one person assigned to heavy machinery. We have 31 people who are currently unassigned any specialties uh, who are just working in the plant. 
as we go down here, we can see each assignment, and this is actually what the employee is going to be participating in that day. So here we can see that Beatrice is an estimator. We have Jack White as a construction manager. Continue down here. And as we go also continue down, we can also see any holes or vacancies we have. Those may have been uh, created by folks calling in sick, using vacation, uh, or other leave types. A great thing about this view is it does allow you to see what we call custom views. So if you want to see a particular area of the schedule or you want to see everybody who's missing today or you want to see everybody who's on a certain work type, you'll be able to use our custom views to be able to sort that real quickly and view that data. Now we're going to go ahead and, and uh, go into the crew scheduler area. We do have several scheduling icons that are available, the different ways to display the scheduling data. Uh, the most prevalent one that's utilized is what we call our daily uh, schedule or our crew scheduler. Uh, and this is a graphical view of your scheduling that will display all of your data. Here we go. In a format that is uh, very user friendly. Here we see each of our assignments or the area that the employee is scheduled to work in and then the employees who are scheduled to work in each of those assignments. Now this is gonna utilize basic features that you're probably accustomed to using already. So if an employee calls in sick, you can simply grab, uh, drag and drop them into the employee's off area, select a leave type. This is completely customizable, all these leave types, so you can track them and save those entries. If employees are moved around the plant, so let's say we're gonna move somebody from uh, this site medical over to maintenance, just simply grab them and drop them into the assignment. Now James may not know he needs to uh, work in a different location, so I can also send reminders quickly from the crew scheduler, which will send them a text message or an app notification that their work shift has been changed. Now this is a pain point we see a lot within organizations, uh, is that uh, folks don't know where they're going to work or don't know their schedule for the next week or previous uh, weeks or what they worked before. Um, so we also have the calendar icon, which allows you to pop ahead to different days in the future or in the past. And also be able to view a week and a month view all at one time. Now, as employees, if I work in certain areas of the plant and I don't necessarily want to see the supervisors or I don't want to see, uh, you know, the back office, you also have individual views to be able to view what's important to each of those uh, users. Now under the more options tab we also have what we call our external sharing link. This is a great option to be able to share with uh, other users or other parts of the plant. So uh, perhaps you have different areas in here and you want to share your view with somebody else. What this allows you to do is to create a shared view link that creates a URL of your live view of your schedule right now. As changes are made, they also update this live scheduling view. Now we'll go ahead and go back here. So the next thing I wanna do is, is I do wanna start and demonstrate a callback, but uh, in order to do that, again, if you haven't sent your phone number over in, just go ahead and send that over as a question. Like I said, we'll delete it directly after the call. We just simply wanna demonstrate the telecommunications piece. While we wait for those to come in, we also offer what we call under more options, our finalized assignment. So if you are a supervisor and you want to finalize the folks who are uh, working in that position, uh, maybe after the schedule, if you wanna carry over your scheduling data into your payroll software or into your uh, other HR pro programs, you also have the ability to select an assignment and select finalize. Once you do this, this will lock the schedule for that particular assignment for that day. A little check mark will appear and if we hover over it, we can see who finalized that assignment. Now, uh, anytime a schedule assignment is finalized, what it allows you to do is then uh, lock it down. Now, there isn't a permission that allows folks to be able to go in and make changes after the fact. So if you uh, would like that to uh, maybe someone needs to go in and change hours or make adjustments, they can go in and do that. Otherwise, those are going to be locked for folks who don't have those permissions. Now here, James, we can see has been a sent a reminder for his work shift change. That little yellow dot indicates that a reminder has been sent to him. He received a text and an app notification for that. Now, if he acknowledges that within an hour, that little yellow dot will actually turn green, which indicates that he acknowledged the work shift change. If he doesn't acknowledge it after an hour, it'll actually turn red. 
Now let's say he calls me up directly. Hey, Brandon, I see that I need to work at maintenance night tonight. I got it. I can also go in and set to acknowledge, whoops, set to acknowledge manually by selecting set reminder. Now each employee who's on the schedule also by right clicking on their name, uh, get several different items. The fatigue levels is, is one of the big ones that we have here. And fatigue levels allow you to set certain work limits for your employees uh, that are really managed to help keep employees safe. Um, so here we can see that for Geo, that each shift that he's been assigned over the last six or seven, four, and two days. If you had limits set, you'll also see a threshold for those uh, where they're at. This is a great decision to help uh, offset if you have overtime shifts or you have certain assignments that employees can't work in over a certain amount of hours. Uh, the fatigue tracker is a great way to track that and ensure that your employees are staying safe. Now, as we continue through, the last thing I'll show you here is if you have multiple work sites within your location, under the more options, we have also have what's called our roster map. Our roster map shows you where each employee is in a live real-time view uh, on a map overlay. So you can see where all of your employees are scheduled to work during that time frame. So here we can see uh, each employee, where they're actually scheduled to work at within an area. So if you have multiple sites, you can also pan across to those. So if I have a, you know, a shop over here or another uh, manual, factory over here, I'll be able to get around to those as well and see a live view of your staffing levels. Uh, and also we put a traffic overlay on there. So if you're curious on how long it takes an employee to get from uh, you know, one area to another, you'd be able to see that. Now, as we wait for a couple more phone numbers to come in here, we will, uh, I'll go ahead and set up a sign up event. So sign up events allow you to build events for either extra shifts or voluntary events uh, using a, a area where employees can sign up. So simply create a new event. You can put the information of what that's for, when it starts and ends. How many employees you need. and select save. What happens now is each employee will receive a, uh, an app notification and an email that there's a new event to sign up for. They can either log into their app, they can also log into the uh, scheduler directly, and they're able to go in and select the event, view any information about it, and if they'd like to work, they can simply select sign up for this event. That will add their name on the right side of the screen here. And now we can see that uh, Brandon Crusence has signed up for this event. Their name also gets added to the miscellaneous area of the crew scheduler. So on the 12th, if we go over there, you'll see that my name is on the right side of the schedule in the miscellaneous hours, which is a way to track your employees' extra shifts. Uh, you can also use it to track uh, events outside of standard work shifts, so maybe meetings, uh, trainings, things of that nature. Now, uh, because we have an extra shift, you can see my name's over there. I also have a hyperlink to get back to the event. So if other employees are interested in working that, uh, they could actually see that as well. Now, since we're on the 12th, I wanna go ahead and fill an open shift uh, because I just had an employee call in sick. So let's say that uh, James here called in sick. He can either use the app to call in directly, or maybe he uh, called me directly and I'm just gonna simply put him over here in the off area. Select a leave type, maybe a reason for why he's off, and select save time off entry. Now what will happen is because James is gonna drop us below the minimum staffing levels for that assignment, we see we need two folks, we only have one. I can now select the open slot, and now I can uh, fill this with a callback. So a callback is how our system will initiate uh, either certain telecommunications to your employees to fill a shift. So under fill with callback, we can see that now we have a manual callback that's been generated. Now this can also be automated using our assistant module, which will actually recognize that you have a vacancy and then fill it with the corresponding list of employees. I'm gonna demonstrate how to do it manually so you can see all kind of all the steps uh, of it. 
So here you can see it automatically fills for site day shift on the 12th from 6 to 1800. That's the shift length. Here I simply select the uh, when I want this filled by. So maybe I want to know by tomorrow at 5 o'clock who's going to work that shift. And then I'm going to pick a list of employees. And so what's going to happen now is this list could be either based on your your permission sets. Uh, so if you have uh, everybody in a certain, maybe the Teamsters local, or maybe I have everybody who's in management, uh, or anybody who can work line one, uh, that's how that list is going to be built out. And then what you have is that you have some, uh, within there you'll also be able to rank folks by specialty filters and classifications. Now these will use, if you have a contract that you have to follow or you have a set of rules that you follow to contact folks, maybe by seniority or by last date worked or any other rules that you have, we build those into your system so it contacts everybody fair and equitably each time that there's a shift that needs to be filled. Here we can see I'm gonna use the vector scheduling demo. And right now I'm looking for, uh, maybe I need somebody who has a team leader classification or maybe it need to be management you can select different filters or multiple filters now the great thing about this system is it will automatically look at several items it'll first look at that day's schedule if i'm already scheduled to work it won't offer me that shift if the employee is going to be over max consecutive hours maybe you can only work 16 hours straight before and then you need an eight hour break and this will put me on a maybe a 24 hour shift it'll exclude you uh, if that employee is not certified to work in that particular area, then they won't meet filter classifications. It'll also exclude them. And then employees are able to sign up or uh, anti-sign up or say they're unavailable for shifts. So if they don't wanna work those shifts. Now, as the initiator of the callback, you actually are able to override all of those different settings as needed uh, as uh, you're trying to fill your shifts. Now, each employee can receive their messages in one of four different methods. The first way is a text message. Uh, which is going to show here the position needed, the hours to work, your unique message. This is for, let's say this is for line one staffing. Reply, and then these X's here indicate a number, one, two, three, four, space, yes to accept, or one, two, three, four, space, no to deny. Uh, employees can also elect to receive a phone call, which is an automated voice message. They can elect to receive a uh, app notification, they can also, also uh, like to receive a page if they use a, a telecommunications pager. And then uh, if they use that, they can also call back into our system and accept the overtime that way as well. So what I'm gonna do is also, you can uh, set a wait time between employees. So if I select preview callback here, I can see that Katie, Ryan, Brian, and Beth, are, that's the order they're gonna be contacted in. And right now I have a wait time set for two minutes. So it's gonna contact Katie uh, and then it's going to give her two minutes to make a decision. If she ha if doesn't answer in two minutes or denies it, it's going to move on to Ryan, and then it continues down the list there. Again, that list order is set by how you uh, your contractual rules. So if that's uh, you know seniority, hours based, uh, last name based, lottery, we set up all these different systems in the back end for you. Now I'm going to go ahead and select a no wait time because we want to contact everybody at the same time. And now I have ignore uh, some overrides here. Again, as the uh, supervisor, I can ignore those. And then also I have secondary. So maybe I want to contact everybody uh, who's line one management certified first. And if that's not possible, then maybe contact everybody who's line one certified who is a team lead. And you can continue through the list that way. I'm going to go and disable that for this callback, select preview callback, and now we can see all the parameters and how many folks will be contacted. Now you can see Bob, Olivia, Rebecca, and Nicholas are already working, so they will not be eligible for this callback. Now I'm going to select start callback, and this is going to go out. So instead of me having to go in and contact these people individually, manually, uh, what's going to happen? is that it's gonna contact, the system's gonna do this for me. So it's fire and forget, it's gonna contact, and it's live. It takes about 30 or 45 seconds for the system to uh, finalize this list, set it the order, and then contact everybody. Now, since it is uh, no wait time, it goes to everybody at the same time, and then it's whoever can respond back the, uh, the quickest using that method. To respond back, they would just simply type back the 957371 space yes, 
or 957371 space no. If uh, one of the four folks here can accept that shift, that'd be great. Actually, I think Beth is the uh, only one who has a phone number in here. So Beth, if you wouldn't mind taking that shift, that would be awesome. Now, as we wait for this to go out, a system log is generated each time a callback is created. Um, and so here you can see who initiated it, all the parameters behind it. And at the top here, I also have the ability to add a note. So if this is, uh, you know, this was due to a sick call. So I can put a reason of why that callback was generated automatically in the system. So here I can see that the four folks have been contacted. You see a status contact time and when the platform made contact with them and the method which they elected to receive that message. Now we can see that it's pending here. So she haven't resp uh, responded yet, um, but as soon as a response comes in, it is also live. So it'll turn either green, red, or uh, no color change for no answer. Now, as we wait to see if a response comes in, we also have the ability here, if we select the uh, hyperlink, to jump to that crew scheduler date entry. So if other folks are managing the schedule at the same time, they'll be able to go in and see the that a callback has been initiated for that particular time frame by a little CB here that indicates there is an active callback and who wants to fill that shift. Um, so we can go back and review that later. So I haven't received a response yet, so uh, it hasn't gone filled, but if it, once it does get filled, their name will automatically be added into whatever work code you, overtime is assigned to. So if it's overtime, if it's a standard change time where you have to go in and change the work type later, if it's comp hours, you're able to build all those into the platform automatically. Their name will be added here. Now, along with the lines of callbacks, we also have the ability to initiate uh, employee recall. So if you have host something where you need to call back a large group of employees quickly, you can use an employee recall. Uh, and we also have a notifications module, which will send out notifications via the same contact methods uh, and also allow two-way communication between employees. Now, kind of switching gears here uh, and looking over the time off module, uh, it does allow employees to request time off using the, either the app or the platform itself. They can request certain leave depending on if you manage your accruals, uh, if the leave is requestable or not, uh, or if they are able to or have the max amount of employees off per day. Um, so in this case, let's say I, want to, I personally want to request sick leave. I select who my supervisor is. I put a start and end date for when that shift is. Maybe it's the fourth from eight to two o'clock for a doctor appointment, send that out. And that request gets sent automatically to the uh, supervisor, whoever I selected. You can also have the system generate that automatically to certain employees. So if you wanted to send to the uh, plant supervisor for the day or the staffing office uh, or other areas, you're able to generate that automatically. Now, if you do all of your time off banks at, or all your vacation picks at certain times for certain areas at the plant or your company, then the accruals module is actually, or the uh, actions module is able to set that up and automatically add dates as employees choose to uh, pick those dates. The absence module for larger plants is a great way for employees to call in automated. So they simply call a phone number. That phone number initiates a uh, vacancy and they're able to call in sick directly into the platform without any management approval. Uh, and then it can go into them and create a vacancy and a callback to fill shifts that are gonna drop you below your minimum staffing for that day. Now, all the pieces and parts of this platform really are tying into the backend reporting that lives in our system natively. So under the reports module, we have what's called our employee reports. Employee reports allow us to select data for certain groups, list classifications of employees under certain parameter filters. So here, if I wanna pick a, uh, maybe all employees 
for the date of, uh, let's go back to August 1st till to today. And I wanna see all shifts, time offs, callbacks, et cetera. And then I can break it down even further. So this is really handy if I'm trying to uh, pick up how many folks are uh, taking time off or how many folks are using certain uh, overtime codes, um, certain things of that nature. So I'm gonna select all work types, subclasses, assignments, and codes. And I simply select generate report. Now this will generate a report for me that shows me all the uh, report filters. Also any pending time off request or any self-scheduling request, it'll also bring into here. So if you have those features enabled and utilized, you'll also be able to see here uh, what they are and where they're at. Down at the bottom, we'll see a total, a summary of total hours worked and total hours off and a breakdown of which hours are being used most commonly. A per user total, on both hours worked and hours off. And then down below you see a, a per employee report. So if I wanted to see uh, anything that, uh, let's say Olivia has been doing, I can type in Olivia's name, and now I can see a breakdown of where she had worked, her activity, the assignment she'd been working in, if she was assigned to certain projects. Uh, this is really widespread in our manufacturing commercial space. Uh, in that this may be a, a project for a work, certain work site. Um, so you can also list out by project type and subclass. Start and end date, the length of the assignment, and then what assignment name that was assigned to. Now all of these are also fully exportable. So I can export those natively up here at the top, either an Excel document, what we call a personal history report, uh, or we can also export this as a CSV document. Uh, what's nice about the CSV for both this and the payroll export is that it's a raw data file. So if you want to input, import it into other platforms, you're able to do that quickly and easily using the raw data file. So since we kind of talked on that already, let's go over here into the employees area and select, or I'm sorry, into the reports area and select export payroll data. Payroll data allows us to export the same data we just saw in our employee reports but export it into different formats. So again, I wanna pull for all employees. You can select pre-built pay periods or you can send them on the fly. And then you can select four different payroll reports that we have built natively, an ex a detailed Excel report, a manual time card if you em require employees to sign a time card, a CSV report, and then also we offer what we call our PDF uh, payroll summary report. Now all of these could be saved as templates. So if you pull the same report each week, you're able to actually go into there and pull from that template. So that way the, you have a standardization of the reports that are being generated. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is open these up real quick. We'll just kind of quickly glance over them and take a look at what we have. So I'm gonna open up this employee uh, report first. This is the time card. So for here, we pulled up a list of a time card here for Rebecca. I can see the hours she worked and there's an area for her to sign and to date. Same thing with our, uh, each employee here gets their own sheet. So again, if you require a manual time card signature, uh, then we can build that into there. We also offer a PDF version, which is what we call our payroll summary, which shows, Oh, that's the wrong one, I'm sorry. Which shows each employee and how many hours they had on and how many hours they had off within a uh, description here of what that work type are. So again, if you wanted to go through and review the hours worked, you'd be able to go through there and quickly check that off. And then I'll show you the CSV report. Again, this is the raw data file. You can import time directly from uh, Cruise or from Vector Scheduling as your time and attendance software and then upload that into your payroll software. Now, in addition to the uh, ability to do that through our software using the CSV, we also offer a fully functional API. Uh, so you can actually do a an automatic export of our your time and attendance into, a, uh, into your payroll software using our API. So here we see each employee, how many hours they worked, and then how many hours they were totaled in each category. 
This is also great if you're trying to uh, pull a report together to see how many hours of overtime you had last year. You can do an entire year or two years or three year report on how many hour overtime hours. If you wanted to pull a report and see how much sick leave was used over the last several years, you can pull those reports automatically uh, in the platform. Uh, the last report we'll show you here is actually what we call our uh, callback metrics report. This is a huge uh, and widely used report to see how many shifts you're trying to fill. Um, if you're trying to determine how many employees you have on roster or you have uh, in your system and how, maybe how many more you want to hire or how, what your number should be, the callback metrics gives you an idea of how many callbacks are going out to fill shifts, what those shifts are, who's filling those shifts, uh, and then how long it's taking to fill a shift. Again, if you were using the platform as a uh, to fill shifts and before you were doing them manually, then this would allow you to see a better number of what those reports are and who's filling them. A couple more things here and I'll open up for questions, but uh, the system log is a way that manages the entire platform uh, and, and is a sealed report of what's done. So who's logging in and out, who's making changes, uh, what they're doing, the IP address from where they were accessed. So again, this gives transparency into how the system is being used and what they're doing with it. So here you can see each user when they logged in and out, you know, the source or where they at, were at when they logged in, and then the user description of what they did. This is great, especially when you have several people managing a schedule for a company. This is great because it allows you to see who's making what changes. We also have a user session to see when the last time somebody logged out or logged in and also force an automatic log out. Now for your end users, everybody who's assigned to the crew scheduler uh, in the system gets a day planner built. This day planner will actually show them each of the shifts they're scheduled to work, any extra shifts, if they were assigned to work, uh, you know, if they're on days off, if they're on vacation, those will also export into here. So again, the employee gets a pre-built gen generated calendar of all the days and shifts that they're assigned to work within here. And you can see Haley works a lot of overtime uh, pretty much every day. Um, so you'd be able to go in and see each of Haley's shifts and any specialties or uh, uh, extra time offs or trades or things of that nature. Now on the top right, we have what's called our sync with Google Calendar. It really allows you to sync with any Gmail address and then manage any schedules that you need from there. So if you wanted to manage a, uh, you know, your iCal or Samsung Calendar, you wanted to port it into Outlook, using that sync with your Gmail will allow that calendar date to go over there. So you'll be able to see a personal calendar anywhere. So this was a, a high level overview of, of some of the solutions that we offer. Um, now we do encourage everybody who's in here um, to sign up for a free trial of our platform and really uh, see how the solution can fit best for you. Uh, while you're into there, uh, we also have our, our chat feature which allows you to chat with a member of our team uh, to be able to answer questions and we can schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with you to be able to answer questions and figure out the best solution and pieces for you uh, within your organization. Now, being a uh, cloud-hosted software, our platform is always growing and changing, so uh, we're always rolling out optimizations and new features uh, to make your scheduling needs uh, easier and to fill the best solution for you. So I do want to open it up for questions and see what questions you have. So if you haven't sent them over as a question yet, you can also raise your hand, uh, and then I can also answer them that way. Well, I'm not seeing any questions yet. So uh, again, I encourage everybody to sign up for a trial or reach out to your uh, member of your sale, our sales team directly. Uh, feel free to ask questions and I look forward to working with each of you uh, in the future. Thanks for your time today. I really appreciate it. Have a good day.